Hey everyone, welcome back. It's been a while since I've posted a video, but I wanted to jump on here and see if you wanted to join me on setting up my journal kit. And I'm getting back into just going into stickers and I'm feeling the fall vibes. As you can see, I have my light on because it is so very gray and dreary out. It's been kind of on and off rainy all week. And I don't know, I've just, I feel like summer is just kind of over based on this weather. It's just been kind of in the 60s and the 50s at night. So my month of August for journaling with just Jane Austen inspired instruments and tools went very well and I'm excited to get back into setting up my journaling tier system. Now, if you are not familiar with my previous video where I talk about journaling and tiers, um, it's very much that I've set up a three system, a three part system where typically when I'm usually in my traveler's notebook, everything that I need to journal with um, on a more basic level is in my traveler's notebook. All the pockets are filled with tools. I've got a very slim pair of scissors in here. I've got a sheet of double-sided tape. Everything's in here. And if I just need to grab my journal, and I usually have like a pen looped here or sitting on like a little clip in here, I can just take this anywhere in the house or you know, in the future out to a cafe and just journal with whatever I have in here. That was gonna, that's my first tier. And that's kind of how I've broken it down. And then if I have um, a want to journal more elaborately, I've got my Dali kit that I got from Jet Pens. It's just this kind of slim wallet, which I will talk about and it kind of pops open and stays like that. And then it's just got all of my probably kind of curated favorite tools in mini form in here and I can grab my journal and then this. So this is my second tier journaling kit. My third tier is everything that goes in here in addition to my traveler's notebook and that little zip wallet pouch. And this is kind of sat empty for quite a while. I haven't really touched it in a good few months and I'm ready to get back into it. So uh, grab a cup of tea, coffee, your favorite beverage. It's probably gonna be a long video. I'm just kind of going through all of my supplies. I'm gonna fill stuff in. I've kind of got this set up because I've been using it for the past mm, week or so. And um, I don't know, I think I've got everything that I want. I think I wanna fill up my sticker flakes tin a little bit more. This has got all the non-sticky stuff in here, yeah. So I might fill up the sticker flake tin a bit more. I think I'll do a tour of that separately. Um, and... Oh, that's stamps. That shouldn't even be in that drawer. I recently redid all of my organization on my desk. So it's kind of still in the new part of figuring out where things go. Is this all the sticker flakes that I have out? I think so. Hmm. I thought I had more. I did pack away a ton more stuff into the basement. Um, just because I haven't really been journaling very much or as often as I used to. And I just kind of felt like it was just taking up space if I wasn't going to use it. So throw some stuff in there. How are you guys doing? How are you? How are you holding up? It's been... Gloomy, as I mentioned, here in the Midwest. I 
took a break from filming because I needed to focus on my health. I still need to. I'm actually planning on starting a journal for health to track my health. And I did a food journal once or twice. I attempted it years ago. I think this was back in like 2015 or 16. And it didn't quite work out. But I desperately need to do that now. And I don't know where to start. <laughs> I have an idea of the format that I want to do. I think I want to try a traveler's notebook for a vertical calendar setup. Some pretty much the, the same insert that my husband has for his planner. Um, because I'm really uh, into the idea of being able to just track it hourly, so therefore per meal. And I am just kind of waiting for the Traveler's Notebook 2021 inserts to come out. I'm trying not to get too elaborate with it. I did eye up the Hobonichis um, because they announced their release and their previews and all of that, but it's just far beyond my budget right now for just one planner and a cover. Uh, so maybe next year um, for 2022. But uh, currently, um, I think I'm just going to stick with something on the more affordable scale. And I... I want to be able to track my meals, my snacks, my carb count. Um, for those of you who don't know, I am diabetic. And I think now more than ever, I really need to focus on that portion of my health because the stress from the pandemic from lockdown, from lack of social interaction, um, even my commute. Um, I know the commute doesn't sound like it'd be much, but um, I, now that I'm working from home, I don't have the opportunity to go up and down the stairs at work. And I don't necessarily have the kind of natural progression of just doing the physical things that are part of my job. Um, I only do that once every couple weeks or a few weeks when I go into the office. And I counted that as kind of my physical activity. At home, now that I'm watching my toddler, I'm working from home, it just seems like there's less of an opportunity for me to physically move and I know I mean I think I could just be making excuses for not exercising because I also I also don't like working out I I am the first to admit I just don't like it I haven't found anything that I genuinely enjoy I like um yoga but I also like it in a class setting doing it alone is very hard for me I have to have that kind of group setting to help to hold myself accountable and to kind of feed off that energy. And I'm watching my toddler. My toddler is not in daycare right now because of everything that's going on. So it just seems like I am exhausted at the end of the day. I'm so exhausted. And because I'm not taking care of myself, my energy levels are non-existent. And I need to get back to like the energy that I had when <laughs> when I first had my baby. I was like on adrenaline, but I had so much energy. I was just on it and I was only getting like two to three hours of sleep. So I'd like to get back to that. I'd like to be healthy again. I should be healthy again because I have a family to take care of. 
but I also need to take care of myself. And I don't want to sound like I'm complaining. I am very grateful to be where I am right now. Um, to be able to just have my child at home and, and be able to work from home. Um, but it's still a struggle nonetheless. And I'm sure a lot of moms are, are kind of in the same boat. You're having to watch your children and work and figure out meals for everybody because in the end, I feel like a lot of the household and meal planning still falls on the female of the house. My husband helps when he can, he really does. I'm not saying he doesn't, but generally speaking, I think a lot of those kind of minor responsibilities fall on the female. Like we're the ones in charge of doing Christmas cards every year. If Christmas cards aren't done by us, they don't get sent out. It's just like little stuff like that that's just coming up that I have to deal with, you know? And man, being a female is hard sometimes. We're exhausted. I'm exhausted. Are you? <laughs> so uh, that's where I'm at right now. And I'm just looking forward to gaining my health back and my energy. So that's where I'm at with journaling. I have my personal journal. I want to start a health journal soon. I'm looking forward to seeing what the options are, but I have a feeling I will stick to the vertical because I've looked at it from how my husband uses it and he really likes that format. Okay, so my sticker flakes are done there. And then I'll probably stick these in the little envelopes that I have underneath those tins. I haven't touched even my scrap therapy journal. I mean, when I say that I haven't been journaling much, I really haven't. I've, my last insert, my 013 insert, took me a month to fill up. And that's usually when I don't journal. I. I can easily fill up a 013 insert in two weeks. So that kind of, on average for me, goes to show how much or how little I haven't really done anything. I haven't printed photos in over a month and a half, so I have so many photos to catch up on. I haven't touched my, uh, my daughter's journal at all. So I've got a lot going on. I have been journaling here and there, but I've also been reading a lot. I just needed to kind of bring down that stress level and not be lost in my thoughts constantly. And oh, there's like a whole bunch of stuff in here too. Yeah, so I just needed to be away from my thoughts. I'll probably keep all of this. Can you see? Sorry. And you know what? I'm just going to keep all of the sticker flakes that are in here. I finished North and South, which was very good. Um, I, for some reason, was expecting Elizabeth Gaskell's books to be a lot harder to read for some reason. I have no idea why. I just kind of had this thought that it was going to take me a while. I just breezed through the book. I so enjoyed it. I've seen the miniseries um, well before I knew that it was a book. And all I could think of was Richard Armitage as John Thornton and... That just made the book all the more enjoyable, let's just say. So I highly recommend that book. Um, that was my first Elizabeth Gaskell book. I have Wives and Daughters somewhere, so I plan on reading that possibly for Victober. I've, I'm saving some books for Victober that's coming up, and I'm so excited to start I did get a little impatient and I started reading um, 
Journey to the Center of the Earth by Jules Verne. And uh, so I'm reading that currently. But I did that. I also finished Rebecca because that's coming out on Netflix next month. Um, it's like October 21st or something like that. So I'm really looking forward to that adaptation. It's going to be Army Hammer and, oh, I'm sorry, I can't remember the actress's name. She was in the live action Cinderella and she was in Downton Abbey. I should know her name, but I don't. Um, they are the two main characters and I think that they are very well cast for the two characters. I'm super excited for that. Okay, so I've got my Kweku Tin Kweku. I used to call it Kweku. And I had this in here, which I think I am going to put that back in because they're kind of like fall colors. And I'll just slip that in the pocket here. My scissors and my glue stick. Everybody asks me what I use to stick my stuff in. I just use Elmer's um, Extra Strength. I buy it in bulk on Amazon. I buy it in the like 24 pack on Amazon and I just, that'll last me for, you know, more than the year. Oh, um... I stamped up the other day a bunch of my papers, so like classic -y papers with some of my favorite stamps. So they're kind of all pre-decorated. And then these are the Lian Chung, I don't know how to pronounce it, uh, these um, little gummed labels. So they're already kind of pretty sticky. It's like stamps, you just lick them and, or wet the back. Um, and I did that with a bunch of my favorite stamps. So I will stick those in here. And the great thing is, is it's just already kind of, um, pre-decorated and I don't have to necessarily worry about bringing stamps with me. I'm kind of speaking as if I'm still going to a cafe and I'm not. I'm very much social distancing still just because I am diabetic. And I am not wanting to spread anything to other family members who are also diabetic. So I am very much journaling at home. Uh, no, that's not going to fit in there, is it? I'm going to put some in my little second tier journal kit. Those will fit right. Perfect. Do not underestimate the storage capabilities of little mint tins. I'm telling you, go to the store, go to the mint section. What are they, like $3, $4 a pack of like three of these like little mini Altoids? They are so perfect for corralling little sticker flakes, little kitawashi. I get questions about these tins all the time. I buy these at art museums. When you go to the art museum and you're at the checkout, they always have like art themed mint tins for like $3. I just buy them, I dump the mints out, and I just use the tin. And it's well worth it to me to pay that money um, for that storage because I use them time and time again for all of my little journal kits. And when I change them out, I use different tins because of the size and all of that. Okay, I'm losing time here because um, it's already two minutes. Sorry, I've been just chatting. This is my new favorite little mint um, stamp storage. I got it in the back to school section at Target. It was one of these little flashcard holders and they're perfect for stamps. Like there is so much room for all of your like block stamps. And I've just kind of got all my favorites. Got the koala and then my little house stamp. And that will sit perfectly in there. I also have my little, it's supposed to be like a little portable dog bowl for pets. But I use it as a portable garbage can um, for sticker flake backings and, and whatnot. And then I've got my little case. It's a Korean brand. I, there's no label on it. And then it fits all of my Sore Mommy inks in here perfectly. So I've chosen some very fall shades but i switch them out and it fits three sets perfectly in here barely any sliding and nothing gets loose it 
it's perfect. It just fits so well in here. And there we are. That's like half the bulk right there. And then I usually like to have a Sharpie on hand and I put that upside down in the pen loop portion of it because if I'm writing on vellum, the Sharpie pens work very well. And then I usually like to have some sort of um, silver gel pen because that's my favorite to write on black paper. What else do I want to add? Oh, I got this recently in the Halloween section at Michael's. It's their Recollections stamp and I really like it. It's um, just a black cat. So I'll kind of stick that in here. It's just like a little bonus thing there. And then we have, I'm not looking to do too elaborate of journaling. Honestly, and my setup doesn't normally change too much. That's the thing. I tend not to add too much that varies. I'm trying to think of what I can add. I found these at Marshall's and they were very reasonable. The they're the Amy Tangerine Slick Writers. If you're not familiar with this type of marker, it's a felt tip marker, but it actually writes on washi and it dries very quickly so it doesn't smear um, like your regular kind of like washi like this, where it's kind of got that slick surface um, and it came in some fun colors. And I thought I could use the brighter ones for my scrap therapy, but then the orange would work for fall, the grays, the teal. So I might add, maybe I'll add the orange and the teal just kind of stick that in here. My fountain pens, I'm trying to still figure out how to store that in here because you're not really supposed to store them upright. And then I was thinking, let's see, I've got to move some stuff. I still have some organization I need to do in my craft area. Just kind of gotten a little... I think the downside to having a whole room to yourself is you can so easily just make it a dumping ground. And once again, I'm not, I'm not ungrateful. I'm very grateful to have my own space. But uh, I'm, I could be perfectly content just moving downstairs and just giving up this room, but I would have no reason to give up this room. Um, you know, my daughter's got her own room. My, my husband has his own office. This is just a spare room, so. So I have this little folio. Um, it's got three tabs. It's got the Sumiko Garashi guys. I'm just gonna slip the little papers in there. Maybe throw in some fun papers. Sorry, this is happening all off camera because I don't really, there's like a whole cart of, my Rascog cart is just full of stuff. Um, oh, I can probably use that little bit there. Let me move this. So you can see. Some natural handmade papers, bits of nature, Victorian stuff. Oh, I can actually use that for Victober. That would be perfect. Some old vintage photographs. I think I got these thrifted somewhere in Seattle. That'll work out. Some brown paper. These will work out for stormy nights, some vellum, use those up, use those up, perfect. Okay, so I've got a bunch of stuff that I can use here. This is a little glassine bag that I tore up. Um, okay, that worked out. There's some papers to start. I plan on 
plan on going through a lot of my magazines that was kind of built up when I kind of just gave myself a journal break. And all of them are like the fall themed magazines. And I plan on going through those and just reading them leisurely, going through the photos. And I'm sure I'll get a lot of great images to put into my journal. Okay, so these are all the papers that I can I like to do it by category so it's easier for me to search. So I've got all my stickers on one side and usually put those in the back so I just know that the back portion is stickers. I use this folio a lot so. Um, and then my second portion is all of my kind of like loose papers and bits. vintage photographs in the front and this kind of keeps things nice and slim so if you ever see these in um, an Asian bookstore these are nice to pick up or you can find them on Etsy I got this one on Etsy it was like a freebie from an order that I made a long time ago and that kind of just slips perfectly in there so I've got a lot of room in here I don't plan on really adding much else I might add a watercolor set I might I thought about putting together some of my favorites in here I might put some um yeah I might put some small shimmery bits in there but um that's going to be the majority of it so I've got my stamps my inks my papers my glue stick scissors, sticker flakes, various things all in there. This is already elaborate enough for me right now. And there we have it. So I've got my three tier journaling system right here. And my journal, which is always packed full of um, a bunch of stuff right now. Currently it's this one right here. It's uh, the Amazon Basics. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, if you made it to the end, thank you for watching. I know it's been a long video. I hope you guys are all doing well and I will see you in my next video. Bye.